coming up on Mobile Learning in the Classroom presentation apps. Hi, I'm Guy Trainin. And I'm Zoe Falls. And this is Mobile Learning in the Classroom. And today, considering the new school year, we're talking about presentation apps. So, so I have a couple of different apps that I'm going to tell you about. The first is Nearpod. And my favorite part about Nearpod is that it's interactive. It's a built-in tool to make your presentations interactive. Mm -hmm. So your students aren't just sitting there passively consuming the information. And you can do a lot of different things with it. When you create a presentation from scratch, you can yeah. kind of really get that in-depth, hands-on version. But if you're kind of in a hurry, because you realize the semester's gonna start a lot quicker than you <laughs> thought, you can take presentations that you have previously created in Google Slides or PowerPoint, or even if you have PDFs mm -hmm. of content, and you can dump it into Nearpod, and it will automatically convert it. And then you go in and add the interactive features at specific points in your presentation instead of having to recreate everything from scratch, which is an awesome feature for me. So I have a presentation that I use when I demo um, Nearpod to teachers, and so I'm gonna go ahead and do a live session. There is an option for student pace, so if you have someone that missed class mm -hmm. or you're teaching online, there is an option where you can share a student-based or student-paced presentation or if you have learners that need to go at their own pace instead yeah. of yours and you can make it available to them outside of school so they can look at it at home. We're going to go ahead and do a live session. Okay and I will join as a student. So when it loads it'll give a code and it's ZVNTJ. Once all of your students are in and you're going to see on the screen you're going to see the teacher view. Um, so it'll show me over here students. Now your students do put their own name in. So one of the things I always caution teachers is set, set rules before mm -hmm. you use this. Let them know that you see everything they do in here and you have the option to share their responses with the class. So in teacher view you get to see who is signed in in your student list and mm -hmm. as we go through you'll also be able to see which of your students are participating, how they're answering, and that allows you to have those on-the-spot knowledge checks. And one of the things that I want to say is, and you can't see this, so you can see, this is what I can see, but I can't get, I can't move far, fast forward or back without the instructor doing this. So one of the things about both Pear Deck and, um, and this one is that really the teacher controls the pace of everything yes. that happens unless it's self-paced. Yes. So my first slide is just the intro. Um, then it goes through and I have a YouTube video so you can import videos from YouTube since this is on the planets this is a Bill Nye video this particular lesson is targeted towards middle school aged mm -hmm. um, students so they can watch the video on their own so after they've watched the video there's a question and the question will show up and this one is a true or false statement Pluto is still the last planet in the solar system so we're going to go ahead and get an answer. And what I do on my side is I just get the question. I have true or false. And then I have a send button and it asks me to confirm. So you can't just press it and by mistake get the answer. It says, do you want to send this answer? Absolutely, I do. So then in teacher view, it'll show me, it'll show me the answer. And so guide chose B. And I can choose to share the answers mm -hmm. with the class. So what will happen is they'll look on their screen and they'll see a pie chart showing yeah, how... like this. And it's an anonymous pie chart. The teacher gets to see, based on name, who answered what. The students only see the data. Mm -hmm. And so as a teacher, you can see, oh, everybody seemed to understand that, and then you can move on. Or they didn't. Maybe I should re refresh that before we move on. Mm -hmm. um, so again, then we have some... This should look really, really familiar. Standard text mm -hmm. slide. There are going to be some more content slides here. Mm -hmm. So this one is actually a link to NASA's website. So in, in Nearpod, I put it, and you can't see it on mine, but the students see the web page. So what's really cool about this is you can control where they go. You can give them those access to information mm -hmm. that's on the internet 
but you've sent them to a specific yeah, place. Yeah, I'm trying to click on a link and it's not going, so yeah. And so that shows them just the content you want them to have. And then again, when it's time to move on, I mm -hmm. automatically move them forward. So I can push them through more of the content slides. And then again, another question to check for, answer, or to check for knowledge. And this, you can have different types of questions. So the, the first one was a true or false. This one, I asked them to list the planets in the Milky Way. So the idea is for them to list as many as they can. And again, this is one of those nice moments where if you aren't one-to-one -one and they're in their groups, they can mm -hmm. work collaboratively. And even if they are one-to-one, -one, tell them yeah. to, you know, at their smaller tables or with a partner to come up with the list together to get that collaboration going and to make the students, you know, more successful in their answers. So then again, on the teacher end, you'll see when the answers start to populate. And I can see that guy Saturn, Mercury, Jupiter, Earth, and Mars. And again, I can share, share the answer. So, mm -hmm. and you can do that in a couple of different ways. You can do that to show the correct answer. You can do that to show an incorrect answer and have mm -hmm. the students fill in the missing pieces. And you can do it without embarrassing any of your students because it's all anonymous. Yeah. And on the other hand, you, these are really great ways to start discussions. So you can use this word or you can use this response, uh, whether it's quantitative or like we just had text, to start a discussion around why does this work or what part of this answer is correct or what are some other ideas. So there are lots of ways where you can use that to get kids talking. Exactly. So again, this is just another multiple choice question after some content slides. And in this one, they can choose more than one. Um, and again, so you can set the parameters of the questions mm -hmm. when you're setting up your, your slides. So and again, I can show the pie chart of the answers. And then I can unshare. So the other thing is you can show multiple responses. Mm -hmm. So one of my personal favorite features is this is a Twitter feed. Mm -hmm. So I can pull in since this was on the planets and Mars, I pulled in the Curiosity Rover's Twitter feed because what junior higher doesn't think it's cool that a robot has a Twitter feed. And this is the live Twitter feed. Yes. So this is in real time. This is not some Correct. pictures of the Twitter feed. Yes, awesome. and that's the same way with the website. Mm -hmm. they, it's locked down so that they can't maneuver out of it, but it's a live, it's not you know like a history mm -hmm. screenshot. Yeah. And again, another video, and this one mm -hmm. deals specifically with the Mars rover that we just sort of saw. Um, again, more content slides. And then there's going to be a quiz at the end. And it's two, this one is only two questions. But again, this is sort of that summary. How much do you guys remember from our mm -hmm. larger presentation? So again, I can share the answers. and. 50-50, good job. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> and, then, and then just to reference this slide yeah. at the end. Um, but one of the other things you can do is you can save information from the session. Mm -hmm. So you can track that. So if you, have a, if you have separate classes, but they're all doing the same thing, you can track the progress of individual classes as they go through the presentation. Okay. So uh, the one thing that you didn't show that I think is important to talk about is that you can have questions that are involved with just circling and connecting. Yes. So I'm now kind of making my own. Uh -huh. And in the Add Activity section, you can do Draw It. Mm -hmm. And this is where they would just draw their own response. Um, and that's where when they're on their tablet, they're just using their finger and mm -hmm. they're drawing. So if you wanted them to draw the rings of Jupiter, you would put a planet and then have them draw the rings on. And there's another activity where it's fill in the blanks. And I think that option, you paste the text yep. and then my text.
And then you tell it which one you want to be the blank. And then when they do it, they, they type in mm -hmm. their response. Um, it links to Google. So mm -hmm. if your students already have a Google account from Google in the Classroom or something like that, you can have them just log in with that so they don't have to have new passwords new login. or logins. And this is something we're all concerned with is how many logins to remember. Exactly. And also wh whose information goes where. So if you're already working with Google, this is an easy way to think about this. Uh, the one I want to talk about is called Pear Deck, and you can find it at PearDeck.com. It's very similar. So uh, Nearpod and Pear Deck are almost identical. Pear Deck does some things better. It has some better items or different items. So right now I'm presenting, and this is a seventh, uh, a seventh grade, and this is an example, an example that actually exists inside, uh, inside Pear Deck. And both have uh, some lessons that are available for free, and I suggest always downloading a few just to see what other people are doing, even if you're not teaching that. If you are teaching that, that's fantastic. Exactly. Somebody may have done your work for you, not necessarily, but may have. And so you can use it or change it, and you can see it starts with the standard, and it's a way to share, and here's... So this is the kind of presentation that really serves as a, as a guide to you as a teacher and to a anchor students' attention. This is not the kind of thing that has lots of, a, lots of interactive features. Because there's not a lot of extra stuff going on, for some students it's a lot easier to focus on just the one word or the couple of words on the screen rather mm -hmm. than in the other presentation that was more colorful and in some cases more distracting yeah. for the learners to process through that information. But from all other features, they're very, very similar to what we have um, across both apps. So you can choose one or the others. We know districts that have chosen one or the other. A Pear Deck uh, is more dependent on actually paying. Mm -hmm. So uh, where we've seen it very successful is when the districts pay and you yes. get all the features because they're fantastic features. They are. Um, but uh, in Nearpod, you can actually get quick access. So, uh, and for free, and try it out, and do all of these things. You can impair that by, again, you get less features. So that's something to think about. If you don't have the support of your school district, a Nearpod may be an easier entry point. So uh, that's about that. So today, on mobile learning in the classroom, we talked about different presentations uh, and the way to freshen up the way what you're doing, especially if you have, as we talked about with Pear Deck, and uh, uh, really, what do you do if everybody's got a device? How do you uh, provide that uh, information to students? And we'll see you next time on Mobile Learning in the Classroom.